Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and it's time for your weekly wrap up and it's Monday yet again. I can't believe how fast these weeks go by, but uh, we are here for another wrap up and I wanna begin first by thanking our newest Patreon subscriber, Chris Pistacco. I wanna thank Chris for, uh, first of all, being a very frequent commenter on the channel, but also for his contribution on the Patreon. And I wanna thank everyone who contributes on a regular basis, as well as all of you who watch on a regular basis too, because again, all of those things grow the channel and I greatly appreciate your support. So what did we do this week? Well, uh, we took a look at the Me Box, and this came in uh, courtesy of a viewer, actually, Trent Hoverman, who uh, found one at his local Walmart before it was officially released. He bought it and uh, shipped it out to me, and I was able to uh, get the review up very quickly on it. I'm still getting a lot of views on this thing because I think today it was just uh, actually released out into the wild. I haven't seen it on any e-commerce sites, but I think Me or uh, Xiaomi uh, is selling it directly on their website now. So I'll put up some affiliate links on uh, that video once I have a place to to link you to, but it looks like it's coming out very soon. A decent little box. It's probably more of a consumer box than an enthusiast box. It doesn't do all the things that a home theater person might want, but uh, it is an inexpensive Android box, and I'll talk a little bit more about it when we get to the Q&A. Uh, we also looked at the iPhone 7 Plus and wondering, uh, I wondered if it was worth the upgrade, and I talk a lot about the new camera system on the phone, so definitely check out that review. All those things will be linked in the playlist down below. Also got a hold of the Philips Hue system and uh, the OnHub router, which is that Google-powered router that uh, hasn't been all that exciting to people, but I really like it for consumers because it's very simple to use and Google manages all the security. Well, now you can control light bulbs from it uh, and you can have your guests control the bulbs without getting access to the rest of your network. And I demonstrated how that works. And uh, we took a look at the DJI Mavic Pro. This wasn't a review, but a first look because uh, they invited me out to their big uh, unveiling in New York City. I love going to these events because it's nice to just to see how these products roll out uh, in person. And I was able to pick it up and handle it. And I talked a little bit about what I saw there. So you can see that first look review. Hope to get one in. I'm going to buy one uh, at some point and we'll review it when it comes out. So stay tuned. We'll probably get that one in. It's amazing how fast they turn over their product life cycle at DJI, but that is uh, what they are up to. Now I want to do some errata because I got a couple things wrong that I wanted to correct the record on. Uh, the first bit of errata is on the Blue Life One X2 and it involves the backing of the phone. So when I reviewed the product, I said the backing was made out of plastic. That is partially true. It's actually plastic and metal and I want to show you exactly what that is uh, right now. So what threw me off was the fact that the entire frame here is all plastic, but uh, in this section here, they have uh, glued on some metal component. It looks like a magnesium or very lightweight thin metal in the back. So basically the metal is uh, from this antenna line over to this antenna line, and then it's plastic up here and down there, probably for uh, signal uh, strength issues. So it is actually metal right in the middle here, but not on the top or the bottom. And then the frame that it's in, which again threw me off because I saw all these molding dots on there and stuff. Uh, this is actually plastic and metal and not just plastic. And the other bit of errata involves the Mi Box because in my review I stated that the voice search was not a universal search and I was incorrect in that. So uh, what Google will do when you do a voice search, if it can find a piece of content on some of the supported apps that feed into its search algorithm, it will present you with options. So uh, here's an example of I think Star Trek First Contact uh, where you can find it both on Google Play and on Netflix. So I was incorrect in saying that it was only sending you to Google properties, but of course you'll get a lot more if it does find a Google property in that search. And now it's time for some Q&A. And speaking of the Mi Box, our first question is about the Mi Box. And a lot of folks wrote in on my review uh, asking how it compared to the Nexus Player. And I did boot up my Nexus Player after months of sitting in the closet and having used the Nexus Player now for about an hour or so this afternoon. I have to say it's faster. It feels faster than uh, the Mi Box does. I was not able to run the 3D Mark benchmark on it because it doesn't run on the Nexus Player, uh, which is maybe why the Mi Box might have a bit of an edge in the sense that it is running with an ARM processor and might have more compatibility. So I remember the Raycast emulator didn't work on, uh, on the Nexus player, but it does work, of course, on the Mi Box. So uh, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter because the Nexus player has been discontinued. Basically, it was Google's reference design for what Android TV should look like. But the Nexus player is powered by a Bay Trail Atom processor.
processor, uh, unlike the Mi Box, which is a, a slower ARM processor along with an older GPU. So I do think the Nexus Player will perform better uh, for queuing up videos and doing uh, app kind of stuff on there. Maybe a little bit better on gaming, but for the most part, it's going to be about a, a toss-up really between which one is faster than the other. And again, it doesn't really matter at this point because the Nexus Player has been discontinued. And if you can't find one at your favorite retailer, you'll never find one because that is the end of the line of the product. But I do think the Mi Box is probably best suited now for uh, a low-cost Android device for consumers if you're looking for one. But my uh, box of choice still remains the NVIDIA Shield TV. And I got a very interesting tweet from Mike the other day about a video that he found produced by a company called ReviewMeta.com. And what they do is uh, analyze Amazon product reviews. They've gone through 197,000 products here on the U.S. version of Amazon, looked at millions of reviews, and they have uh, been able to re-weight the star rating on reviews by pulling out product reviews written by people who got stuff for free or at a significant discount directly from the manufacturer. And this has been an ongoing problem. Amazon's been suing people over fake reviews that have been popping up on their site. They take this very seriously. As you'll see in a minute, they are uh, completely changing a very long-standing policy to combat this problem. But uh, this is a really intriguing website that I definitely suggest you check out because uh, you'll see some really eye-opening stuff, especially with products that you may not have heard of before from brands you probably haven't heard of before. And uh, what's been happening is, is that many products from companies overseas are sending out uh, lots of offers to Amazon reviewers, usually the top 10,000 Amazon reviewers, to give them a free product in exchange for a review on Amazon's website. And I want to show you uh, what some of that language looks like. So this is an email I got just this morning, and, and they uh, are offering me a pair of earbuds and a can opener. <laughs> so they sell quite a diverse range of products here. Now, I want to direct your attention to the top of this, where it says, for all the items for reviewing, we offer a 100% off promo code. We hope we could have a long-term cooperation. Now, they're not asking for a positive review here, but they're certainly implying that by cooperating, they will send you more stuff. And I would imagine that if you wrote negative reviews about their product, that would not be cooperative in their uh, definition of the word. Trust is a beautiful thing, they say. Picture or video reviews would be better. So they're definitely looking for richer content uh, posted with their products. Furthermore, we will have more value and more quality products that will keep on coming. If you have any question, feel free to ask. We're always here to help you and they look forward to your reply. But you notice there that they want you to use a promo code. And the reason why they want you to use a promo code is because of this. Let's switch over to a review of a product that I'm considering purchasing. So as you all know, I'm very frustrated over the lack of a headphone jack on my iPhone. I like the fact that uh, the earbuds fit so comfortably in my ears and are not very complicated. So I found some Bluetooth earbuds that uh, look identical to my Apple earbuds and might uh, pass muster for me here. So I went down to the product reviews and uh, you'll see here the top most helpful review is a verified purchase. Oh, great. So this guy must really like these things. Five stars from LQ. And uh, this is a pretty high ranking reviewer most of the time because that's the only people that get these offers. And if I go down here to read more, you'll see below the fold that they got this complimentary, although it says verified purchase. So what's happening is uh, these, these manufacturers are going out to these reviewers and giving them 100% off coupon code, but they're still going through the Amazon checkout process so it shows up as a verified purchase. Now, I get these emails all the time. I usually delete about 99% of them. Occasionally, there's something that might be interesting for the channel. I often like to find like hidden gem kind of products. And uh, more often than not, they're not hidden gems. and They never even make it onto the air here because they're so horrible. But uh, what happens is they're always trying to push you to doing the coupon versus having you send it to, send it to you directly uh, because they want that verified badge on there. In fact, some have even lied to me and said that's Amazon's rule that it has to say verified verified purchase. It doesn't. It's misleading as this review is. Now what I did is I took this review and ran it through Review Meta and what they have found is that the real rating should be about a 2.8. So not bad. It's not going to be the best product in the world, but uh, it's not as good as the current review ranking uh, stipulates it should be here. And you can see here that it's failed in a couple of their analyses here, including the fact that a lot of reviews of the product are all around the same word count, which means that there might have been some uh, either an automated effort or perhaps some uh, effort by people that do this all the time to just load it up with a bunch of shill reviews that might be fake. So this is definitely uh, raising some uh, issues with them. Although they, often, they also found that there are some 
uh, decent uh, things that pass muster here too. So this is probably a kind of a six of one, half dozen of the other kind of product, but other products as you'll see on their website uh, fare worse than that. So uh, that was something that uh, is definitely worth looking at while you're out investigating things. Now just today, uh, Amazon announced that they are no longer allowing people to do this on their platform. So they will no longer allow brands to give products away for free to reviewers nor sell them to reviewers at a discount. It is done as of today. And what was funny was usually when I wake up in the morning, I have probably about 30 or 45 emails from all these different companies in my inbox every day. Uh, today I had four. So I think this is already like done. It's out there. Uh, and this is an announcement from uh, Amazon's Chi Chu, who's their VP of, I believe, uh, uh, customer relations or something. And he actually used to work for Google in the Hangouts department. I used to bug him all the time to get access to Hangouts on air before it came up and running. Uh, now he's over at Amazon and apparently in charge of the review program. Now what's going to remain intact is the Amazon Vine program. And in full disclosure, I am a member of Amazon Vine. And uh, many people who have been getting a lot of this free stuff are very angry at Amazon saying that this is just a way for them to make more money by forcing manufacturers to go through Vine. But uh, I don't see it that way because the way Vine works is that there is no direct relationship between the manufacturer and the reviewer. So Amazon does the pairing. Amazon pairs me up with a product as opposed to the manufacturer picking me to review it. And I think that works uh, very well because it is kind of a blind process in that the reviewer or the, the manufacturer uh, sends product into Amazon. Amazon matches it up with reviewers based on the review history and their purchase history. And uh, that's what, what, what it takes to post the review. So there's no direct interaction. Amazon doesn't editorialize. They don't require a certain rating on a product. And I think it works a lot better. Now, I really don't like getting free stuff. I know that's kind of weird for me to say being a, big, being a, I'm a YouTuber and 100,000 subscribers, we all like free stuff. But honestly, that's not my preference. My preference is to get things on loan here on the channel that I can review and then send back to the manufacturer because first of all, I don't have enough room for all this free stuff. I don't want any of it. Uh, and I really want to just do a good review that has the most amount of credibility attached to it. And I think my reviews where I'm reviewing something that was loaned to the channel just appear more credible to people that don't know me because I'm not gaining any benefit from uh, the manufacturer of that product by having it here. So what I've been doing is as you all know, we've been doing more giveaways on the channel. So I've been giving away a lot of the stuff that the manufacturers don't want back. I often donate a lot of the stuff as well. I just gave a bunch of stuff to our local school here. So I'm going to be doing a lot more of that uh, because I really want everyone to know where I stand on these things because uh, this is happening. This is stuff that's going on. It will continue to go on both on YouTube, Amazon, and many other platforms. And I am not like that. I'm really trying my best here to give you an honest and ethical approach to product reviewing. And it's hard because I'm a single sole proprietor. I can't put, the, put a department together that handles all these interactions. Actions. I'm doing everything myself, so I'm really trying to uh, put down some standards here. But I want you all to know that, yes, we do get free stuff here on the channel from time to time. I don't think it has uh, changed my ability to give you an honest assessment of a product, and I uh, do my best to either put it to work here on the channel in some way or give it away uh, so that we're not uh, giving you the impression that I'm benefiting from this personally. Now, the Amazon Vine program also has a cost for the participant associated with it, so I have to pay taxes on the value of the items that are sent into the show for me to review through Vine. And Amazon actually reports that to uh, the Internal Revenue Service here in the United States. So there is some cost involved uh, for, for those of us who review on Vine to be a part of that program. That's not something that was happening with uh, these incentivized reviews that have been going on here. So just give you an idea as to what's going on out there and a very timely video that was sent over. But definitely check out ReviewMeta.com because I don't think Amazon will be deleting existing reviews. This is a new policy moving forward. Uh, so you definitely want to keep checking back there from time to time when you're out uh, researching a product from a brand you may not have heard from before. And Chad Gartner wrote in asking my thoughts on the new Plex cloud service that was just announced this week. And if you haven't heard, what they're going to let you do is run your Plex server in the cloud. So you can actually have a, a cloud-based Plex server and it will store all of your media in Amazon Drive. Now you need to be both a Plex Pass subscriber and a subscriber to Amazon Drive in order for this to work. So Amazon Drive, I think, is about 60 bucks for unlimited storage. Uh, Plex Pass is about $40 a year or so. So you're looking at about $100 uh, a year to use this uh, system the way they have set it up. And for me, it's not all that attractive because I use very large files here in my home. I store those big Blu-ray MKVs on my uh, network attached storage device, which would be very inconvenient to upload into the cloud. We're looking at 30 gigs a piece there. So those are uh, rather large files. And then I'm also now using that DVR system quite a bit. And that would not be feasible either because first of all, the Plex cloud service doesn't yet support the DVR, but uh, those files, those recordings tend to be about uh, 
two or three gigabytes per hour as well. So probably not feasible for me, but I can see this being very useful as a long-term archive that you can get access to with your Plex clients. So what I typically do with a lot of the TV shows that I watch is I watch them and then delete them. Uh, but this would give you maybe the ability to uh, take those seasons that you watched, offload them off your local storage, put them up in the Plex cloud server, and you can get at them anytime you want just by streaming it over the internet, uh, but you don't have it taking up space on your local network. So if you have a lot of smaller files that are you know, MP4s, H.264 compressions that are maybe seven or 800 megs per episode, it may not be all that long to get that stuff uploaded, and it could be a very feasible long-term archiving capability. And my Q&A for you this week is, how do you store your local media? What are, what are your processes that you use for uh, organizing your media and having it available to other people in your home too? I'm really curious to see what uh, you all are doing out there. So let's have a discussion down below in the comments about uh, good media storage practices, the software that you're using, how you're storing it, and how you're finding stuff too. Let's all talk about that and uh, share some of our best practices. It can be kind of a fun thing to do. So this week, we're going to have my review of the AMD-powered Asus X55 5DA. I actually shot that a week ago, but it got bumped off the schedule by some other stuff that was uh, more interesting to all of you. So uh, hopefully this will be up in the next couple of days. So stay tuned for that. We're also going to take a look at the Mevo. And this is a, a little tiny streaming camera that's used for Facebook Live and live stream at the moment. I think YouTube Live support is coming at some point in the future. And uh, what this does is it shoots at 4K, but it broadcasts at 720p. Now, one of the things that I do often uh, when I'm out and doing a field shoot is that I shoot at 4K and then edit at 1080p so that I can zoom in the image and make it look like I have more than one camera. That's one of the advantages of having a 4K camera and editing at a lower resolution. So when you go from 4K to 720p, uh, you could actually have a, a shot where you maybe you've got three people all talking together and you do a you know, wide shot of the three of them and then you could zoom in on each person's face as they talk. It has some automation involved so it will do that automatically. We'll explore that. You can also set up different zones for it to switch to as well. So it's not as good as having a real true multi-camera shoot but it's better than having just the static camera placement and uh, some of the folks who watch a lot of my production videos are people who are doing live streaming for houses of worship. And this is going to be of interest to those folks because it is much less expensive than doing a multi-camera live switching thing like I do here. Uh, you can get started with something very inexpensive and it'll look a lot better than just a static camera might. And I think for most people, 720p is the most you'll be able to stream at the moment anyhow. So uh, definitely worth looking at. I'm looking forward to playing with that. I haven't taken it out of the box yet, but I'm eager to. Now, if you want to help the channel, you can. You can go to lon.tv slash Patreon and make a monthly contribution to the channel. Uh, we also have fan funding set up at lon.tv. And if you make a contribution via fan funding, do let me know either via an email to lon at lon.tv or through whatever mechanism YouTube provides because the default is for them not to tell me that you did it. And I want to be able to thank you uh, through the end credit roll as well as on next week's wrap up. So definitely let me know as I want to make sure I want to make sure everybody gets thanked uh, for their support of the channel. I'll also be updating the end credit roll in the next day or two uh, with all of the donors from September very shortly, so stay tuned for that. And I have something new to talk about. Plex has set up a, an affiliate program, and every time somebody uh, sets up a new account on Plex through the link down below, uh, we'll get some compensation for that. Uh, this is not requiring you to pay any money, actually. Just setting up an account so that you can access your uh, server remotely will benefit the channel. So if you are uh, thinking about playing with Plex and want to get an account set up, uh, definitely check out that link. It doesn't cost anything. There's no credit card required. Uh, just setting up an account will help the channel. It's something new that I'm trying out, so I'd love to uh, see what you think about that. You can also engage with the channel at lon.tv slash email for my email list. I'll be uh, doing some giveaways only announced on the email list. So definitely get on that list if you want to uh, be up to date as to when giveaways are happening. So uh, check that out. I'll still do a few on the uh, wrap up, but I'm trying to build up the email list a bit more. We also have my Facebook page at lon.tv slash Facebook. The Reddit's at lon.tv slash Reddit. And we've got a bunch of new stuff in the store. And that's where I uh, sell a lot of the things that I review here on the channel. So uh, we've talked about about how I get some things into the channel for free. Uh, some other things I buy and then resell. So that Asus laptop we're looking at next week is one thing that I bought and I'm now reselling it because I am done with the review. So uh, go ahead into the store. I haven't put the Asus laptop on there yet. I want to get the review up and wait for any questions that you might have. But I did post a few other things that uh, you haven't seen yet on the store. So definitely check that out if you are interested in picking up some stuff and helping us offset some of our costs here on the channel. And that's going to do it for this week's weekly wrap up. I want 
to thank all of you for watching on a regular basis and uh, keeping those views coming. Please let me know if there are uh, products coming out this holiday season that you're interested in, especially ones that are not that expensive from uh, brands that are pretty well known. But if there are some hidden gem things out there that you think I should see, definitely let me know down below in the comments. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.